Assalamu alaikum and a very good day. I bid to Dr. Nick Roslin and Dr. Shaharuddin. My name is Siti Farisha binti Muhammad Rafiq, student ID 2016-229512. My supervisor is T.S. Dr. Zuraida Saleh and my final year presentation is on the thermal analysis on solid rocket motor casing. Let's begin. I will cover the concept of a cloud seeding rocket, a CRV7 C15 rocket motor, the solid rocket motor casing in which thermal and structural loads are present upon the combustion of the propellant, the verification of the simulation with analytical results, and I will compare it with three different thicknesses of 3.5 mm, 2.5 mm, and 5.0 mm. These are denoted as model CC 2.5, CC 3.5, and CC 5.0, in which CC stands for combustion chamber, and also to compute the safety factor to find out which of these three are the best solid rocket motor casing. <clears throat> the introduction. Everywhere experiences climate change. Malaysia especially experiences it in terms of floods and drought. To counter this problem, the solution is cloud seeding. Cloud seeding can be done by operating a small-sized rocket such as the CRV-7 rocket motor. This is found out due to the collaboration of UITM and MTC Engineering to construct a cloud seeding rocket to help Malaysia to improve for future and divorce. The focus of this study is the combustion chamber, or also known as solid rocket motor casing. The combustion chamber uses a thick walled cylinder analysis of 2.5, 3.5, and 5.0 mm denoted as model CC 2.5, CC 3.5, and CC 5.0. This is done, this is analyzed through ANSYS and analytical methods. Verification is first done from a journal study in which there is a stress analysis, thermal analysis, and an overall stress analysis, and lastly to compute the safety factor. Continued by analyzing the three different thicknesses, we will find out which is the best for the use of the solid rocket motor casing. In figure 1.1, you may see RPA01 EX01. This is the prototype of a cloud seeding rocket made from the collaboration between UITM and MTC Engineering. Figure 1.2 shows a schematic diagram of a rocket motor case in which you may observe there is an igniter, copper wire, nozzle, motor case, propellant, and there are even skirtings and insulation whenever deemed necessary. Stress analysis is the relationship between external forces applied and corresponding stresses of the cylinder. A thick wall cylinder is accordance to the Lames theorem in which a thick wall cylinder is only approved when it is more than 1 over 20 of the shell's diameter. Now, when the cylinder is long in comparison to the diameter, its longitudinal stresses are uniform across the cylinder. In figure 1.3, you may observe that from left to right, there is a thick cylindrical shell which shows the tangential stress distribution and then the radial stress distribution. Now, equation 1.1 shows the hoop stress for each of the radii length. Hoop stress is also known as tangential or circumferential stress, in which is it is the stress around the circumference of cylinder due to pressure gradient. It is a tensile stress in which it is always positive, has a maximum stress on the inner surface and a minimum on the outer surface. Radial stress is denoted in equation 1.2 for each of the radii length, which is equal and opposite to the gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is the difference between the absolute and the atmospheric pressure. It is always a compressive stress in which it is negative in value. There is always a maximum of radial stress in the inner surface, and it will approach zero on the outer surface. <clears throat> Thermal analysis is actually the variety of techniques of physical property of samples measured continuously against temperature or time. Now, in thermal analysis, we will be looking at temperature distribution and also heat flux. These two things are our focus for this thermal analysis. This is then followed by a safety factor, which is the ratio of yield strength to maximum one mass stress in order to find out if the material used is able to withstand the effects of combustion of propellant. The objectives of this study is first, to understand the concept of solid rocket motor case, two, to analyze the structural and thermal effects of combustion in the case when there is a varying thickness, and three, to determine the suitable thickness of the rocket motor casing. The significance of this study 
is to serve as a benchmark for future studies. This is due to the large effects of combustion, which are convection and radiation, which can be used to verify the analytical or simulation methods. This is, well, basically because experimental procedures are very costly to be done. Methodology. Now, first we start with pre-processing, in which we will compute the material properties, propellant parameters, design modeler, 2D axisymmetric, and also meshing of the element size, followed by static structural analysis, thermal analysis, and thermal structural analysis. Lastly, well, is the safety factor, of course, to find which is the best solid rocket motor casing. Table 2.1, as you may observe, shows the bonnet denim properties, which is used for the verification and also the results. Figure 2.1 shows the ProPEP calculation result. It is a simulation, it is actually a software used to find out the chamber temperature in which we use the propellant of APALHDPB solid propellant with a chamber pressure of 1000 psi. Table 2.2 shows the properties of the solid propellant of APALHDPB with the composition, composition of 681570. The heat exchange coefficient is computed from equation 2.1, in which H is the heat exchange coefficient, C is a constant of 3.075, G is the mass velocity, and Cp is a specific heat of combustion mixture. As you may also observe, there is a burn time of 3 seconds, also given by the MTC engineering engineers. This propellant is chosen because it was their suggestion. Figure 2.2 shows the design modeler in which I constructed a rectangle at first. Now, going to figure 2.3, you may observe a hollow cylinder which is used from the 2D axisymmetric and meshing of element size 1 mm. Figure 2.4 shows the static structural analysis boundaries. Figure 2.5 shows the thermal analysis boundaries. Figure 2.6 and 2.7 shows the boundary conditions when doing a thermal structural analysis. And lastly, I will show you the results of what has been done. For verification purposes, the casing used is also molybdenum with a thickness of 5 mm. This is similar to CC 5.0, but the only difference is that with this verification method is the propellant. The heat exchange coefficient is 416.89 watt per meter square Kelvin with a temperature of 2929.27 Kelvin. The inner pressure is 6.5 bars or also known as 0.65 megapascal. The static structural analysis shows that there is an error of less than 0.28% for maximum radial hoop and von Mises stress, computed from equation 3.1 to 3.3. Figure 3.1 shows FEA versus analytical temperature distribution. As you may observe, FEA has a linear downward trend, whereas analytical has a slight curve going down. Now, this is because analytical computes the equation as a cylinder in which there is a circular motion. For FEA, it is throughout the thickness of the radius in which is a straight path. 3.4, the equation shows the general temperature distribution equation. Simplifying this, we get equation 3.5, in which we assume it is a steady state and also only in the radial direction with heat generation. Applying the boundary conditions as stated in the slide, we may observe equation 3.8, in which we only need the inner temperature. The calculation of analytical assumes that we have the same inner temperature as in the simulation. Further studies must be made in order to get the accurate calculations. Equation 3.9 shows the heat generation rate, whereas equation 3.10 to equation 3.5, 3.15 shows the heat transfer due to the temperature gradient divided by the resistivity of the cylinder. Resistivity comes in three forms, which is first, the convection, second, conduction, and third, radiation. The conduction is due to the material, whereas convection and radiation is due to the propellant combustion. <coughs> Table 3.2 shows the results of maximum heat flux of analytical and simulation, in which there is a small percentage error of less than 3.4%. 
This is computed from equation 3.16. Heat flux is the heat transfer rate as mentioned earlier. Thermostructural analysis is computed from equation 3.17 to 3.19. This is actually the thermal stress equations which is used for this study because there is a small pressure. If there is a larger pressure, this calculation is not exactly correct or precise because that kind of study requires extensive research. As you may see in figure 3.2, it shows the overall radial stress in which there is both a U-shaped curve for the FEA and analytical. Now, FEA assumes that the inner wall takes the negative 0.65 megapascal, whereas analytical took zero because the calculation does not allow for the overall radial stress to begin at negative 0.65 megapascal. For overall hoop stress, however, you may see a similar upward trend for both, for both FEA and analytical, in which the maximum occurs on the inner wall and the minimum occurs on the outer wall. Overall, von Mises stress shows a U-shaped curve in which the center part of the radius shows the minimum of the overall von Mises stress. This is similar to the radial stress but is much bigger because it takes into account the radial and hoop stress. Now we begin with my results. I have used three different thicknesses as mentioned earlier. These are denoted as CC 2.5, CC 3.5 and CC 5.0. All three uses the same casing material of molybdenum with the same propellant of APALHTPB with similar boundary conditions for convection, radiation, and also pressure. Now, radial stress of CC 2.5, CC 3.5, and CC 5.0 is observed in figure 3.5. There is a steeper increase for CC 2.5 as compared to CC 3.5 and CC 5.0. There is a larger stress distribution for CC 5.0, which means it is technically a better choice. Figure 3.6 shows similar downward trend for all three models, in which the maximum of the inner and outer wall is observed in CC 2.5. The overall von Mises stress is much higher than this hoop stress, but is similar in trend as the hoop stress because it takes into account the radial stress as well. So as you may see, there is still a similar trend between figure 3.7 and figure 3.6. Moving on to thermal analysis, in temperature distribution, it is kind of tricky because the emissivity values were used similarly for all three different simulations. Technically, emissivity needs to be different because it depends on the surface and the thickness and many other factors. So this is assuming that it all has the same emissivity. CC 3.5, you may observe in figure 3.8, has a large temperature difference from 1692 Kelvin up until, and it will drop to 1675 Kelvin. And in figure 3.9, you may see the heat flux, which is the heat transfer rate. It is similar for CC 2.5 and CC 3.5. CC 5.0 has a higher heat flux, but it has the lowest initial temperature for the inner and outer wall. For thermal structural analysis, however, the overall radial stress also shows that there is a maximum on the inner wall of the cylinder and approaches to zero on the outer wall. For overall hoop stress, as you may see, it's different than the initial hoop stress. Now this is due to the effects of pressure along with temperature difference. Now, when there is a large temperature difference, CC 3.5 shows that there is a very large difference in hoop stress. This means that a large temperature difference will contribute to a larger stress distribution. This is evident fully in hoop stress and also in figure 3.15, as you may see, for overall von Mises stress. Moving back a slide, you may see that these are the visual representations from figure 3.12 to figure 3.14 for CC 2.5, CC 3.5, and CC 5.0. <coughs> now, von Mises computes radial and hoop stress. So when we calculate the safety factor as opposed in table 3.3, the highest safety factor is shown in CC 5.0, whereas the least is shown in CC 3.5. 
not in CC 2.5 as we initially expected. This is because of the large temperature difference and also the heat flux. Now, looking at the overall overview, you may see that there is a difference in terms of maximum stresses, final temperatures, maximum heat flux, and maximum overall stresses. Now, when we take into account the thermal and structural load, safety factor is what we are really looking for. And so the conclusion of this whole study is that a cloud seeding rocket comprises of several parts, such as the igniter, the propellant, the fin, nose cone, nozzle, when we are focusing on the rocket motor case, it's known as a combustion chamber. And so the collaboration between UITM and MTC contributes to a thorough theoretical study to verify the simulation with the analytical methods. And after computing three different thicknesses, we found out that there is a safety factor of 1.5 minimum requirement from MTC engineering. Now, moving back, you may observe that the safety factor of 1.4308 from CC 3.5 is not desirable, so it is out of question. CC 2.5 and CC 5.0 are in consideration. However, weight plays an important role in small size rockets. The lighter, the better, and also it will be much less costlier. Therefore, CC 2.5 is the best choice. This study serves as a benchmark for future studies in which there are many things to manipulate to find out the more accurate solid rocket motor casing choice. The recommendations for future studies. Basically, the emissivity value plays a huge role in simulation. I've observed that when I don't include emissivity inside the ANSYS simulation, there is little to no temperature difference because emissivity depends on the materials, on the surface, on the temperature. Now, when we talk about surface, it could be about the surface finishing, it could be about the surface, how do we say this, how the surface looks like, whether it's shiny or polished or rough in nature. Now, more materials can also be explored with different, different propellants, like this is APAL HTPB solid propellant. There are many different combinations which requires further studies to be done. So I believe that my study is actually a benchmark, a starting point, if you will, for further studies, because it would have been much better for this semester if I could have done experimental results as well, so that way I can actually see what my work I'm doing is actually really right, you know? <clears throat> so I believe that for future and divorce, the other students which want to pursue on solid rocket motor casing needs to carry out studies experimentally but it needs to be done properly. You cannot just simply straight away do whatever experiment you want. Now that I have given a method on how to choose a solid rocket motor casing, all I need now is for the future generation to actually do the experiments and find out if what I'm saying is right or if what I'm saying is wrong because the only way to find out is to actually do it. So if you have any questions, you can contact me at 010210 You may WhatsApp or give me a normal call. Um, you could also email to me at farsh97 at gmail.com. And if there is anything that I have lacked to explain, please do not hesitate to ask me. I will answer to my best ability. And I hope the panel, Dr. Nick Rosen, Dr. Sharudin, I hope you and your family are doing well. So if there's anything else, is all I like to say. Thank you so much. And I really hope I managed to pass my degree with flying colors. Assalamu alaikum.